Hi, my name is Dr. Tom Becker, and this is my short teaching demonstration entitled An Introduction to the 6-4 Chord in Tonal Music. The 6-4 Chord in Tonal Music um, is a linear harmony. Linear meaning that it is, it's the voice leading connection between the chord that comes before it and the chord that comes after it. And unlike root position in first inversion chords, this chord is unstable. It's unstable because it has a dissonant fourth in it. <clears throat> now fourths in the common practice are considered dissonant if the bass is involved with, con with constructing that fourth, as you see in this third chord here. <clears throat> you have the, the alto and the bass creating the dissonance. Now there is a fourth in the first inversion chord the way I arranged it, but if it's not involved with the bass, it is not considered a dissonance. So number two, the first inversion is fine. And everyone knows that there are no dissonances in a root position chord. There are four standard uses of the 6-4 chord, each of these with its own way of preparing and resolving the dissonant fourth. <clears throat> the cadential, which is built on the tonic of whatever key that you're in. The passing, the neighboring, and the arpeggiated. Now, at least in older times, there's, there's been a controversy, controversy whether the 6-4 in a cadential situation should be called a 1-6-4, or should it be called something different. For reasons of spelling alone, any inversion of a 1 chord remains a harmony based on the tonic. However, when considering the 1-6-4 within traditional cadential progressions, it fails to project the sense of tonic when we consider its function. In diatonic harmony, we are concerned with three chordal functions. Tonic, predominant, and dominant. And tonal music's traditional cadential model goes tonic, predominant, dominant, tonic. This is where the 6-4 is placed in that progression I just described on the previous slide. We have tonic, we have predominant, and then the 6-4 chord. So it follows the predominant. <clears throat> it moves then to the dominant, and both of those chords are supported by the fifth scale, scale degree. It is positioned as a functional dominant, prompting a Roman numeral analysis as 5-6-4 rather than 1-6-4 and prompting a single analytical symbol as this. You have your five indicated, you have the interval above the base six moving to five, you have the interval four above the base moving to three. Here's our first example. Example number one starting on scale step one in the second measure, <coughs> excuse me, um, becomes a dissonant fourth above the bass. The C is suspended from the predominant. Here's the first three chords. The C then resolves to the third of the dominant, 5-3 chord, as a 4-3 suspension. Here's the 6-4 chord. And it's a resolution. The six of the cadential six four in the tenor becomes a second non-harmonic event, an accented passing tone prepared from the pre predominant and resolved to the fifth of the dominant. Here's the predominant. Let's pull out that tenor voice a little more here. These two voice leading resolutions supply dissonance to the cadential 6 4 by designating two of the three harmonic components above the 6 4's bass as non harmonic tones. This confirms that the 6 4 is not functioning as a harmonically stable, <clears throat> key defining tonic sonority. It is rather an unstable, embellishing harmony. 
Example 1b, improves example 1a's melodic stasis by beginning on scale step 3. However, the melody in example 1b is still not well defined when moving to the 4 chord because the melody skips from scale step 3 to scale step 1. The skip sounds more like a harmonic arpeggiation than melody. <clears throat> Here is number 1b. <laughs> activity there. In a general sense, our common practiced ideal of tonal music, <clears throat> melodies are formed by the motion of one adjacent pitch to another within a diatonic collection, while harmonies are formed by motion between two non-adjacent pitches. Therefore, common practice often distinguishes the melody from the harmony by presenting distinct stepwise melodic descents. I just paraphrased that slide there. Moving on to example 1C. This illustrates this melodic distinction that I just referred to. The predominant 2-6 is substituted for the 4 chord. This allows the stepwise motion down to scale step 2 from scale step 3. Here's the 1 chord to the 2-6 chord with the stepwise motion. <laughs> This consistent motion can only occur, however, if the cadential 6-4 follows the predominant. The 6-4 allows scale step 1 to bridge the gap between scale step 2 above the predominant and scale step 7 above the dominant. This results in a 4-3 resolution instead of a suspension as it was earlier. The 4-3 motion is now an accented passing tone moving in parallel with the 5-6 passing tone resolution. Here is all of 1C. The cadential 6-4. Indeed, the voice-leading resolutions of the Cadential 6-4 became a time-honored tradition in the common practice era. And, although to our modern ears the Cadential 6-4 may seem commonplace in, co in commonplace times, <clears throat> its powerful voice-leading effect was robust and universal. Let's move on now to an, ex an excerpt by a guitarist by the name of Matteo Carcassi, date 1792 to 1853. This is from his study in C major. Um, I'm going to begin at the asterisk where I've marked measure one and play this passage leading up to the final cadence that, that starts in measure six and is completed well on the downbeat of measure nine. I'm just going to block out these chords. What's interesting about this passage is that there are two 6-4 chords employed before in moving to a dominant 7 and then resolving to the tonic of the key. The first one is in measure 4. You see a 5-6-4 moving to actually a 5-7 chord. The 6 above the bass moves to the 7th. The 4th above the bass moves to the 5th. Now, there are a number of reasons that this is a cadence, but it also can be argued that this is not a cadence because it's not a cadential point. It's cadential-like, that's for sure. Um, it, this is still part of the characteristic part of the piece. I mean, this is what's ha this is how the piece is built. Um, this would be the way that you would recognize as this piece working. 
you have this 6-4 chord here, moving to the 5-7, moving up, and then there's your tonic chord. The very last case there, the second time that this the 6-4 is employed, starting in measure 6, is really where the, where the cadence comes in. This is not characteristic of this piece. This is um, conventional the usage of this cadence. You would hear this in countless numbers of other pieces just like this. But this is how composers of this era and in this style signaled that they were coming to a close. Everyone recognizes this convention. Everyone knows that when this is heard, it's going to end. This a, it's a true signal. It's like raising your hand in class. It's a signal. Um, the, the previous 6-4 moving to 5, moving to 1 isn't moving down by step. It doesn't have the melodic content, content so it just it, it's, it's a different animal than this one right here. <clears throat> Starting in measure 6, you have this, C major, then a few chords later, you have the E moving down to D to the 2-6 chord. That comes in the 5-6-4, melody moves down by step to C, the 5 chord, melody moves down by to B, and you're ending up on your 1 chord. That is your cadence. Now, I, I recognize that I skipped over a couple, a couple chords after the initial 1 chord, there are two chords that follow it. However, these chords do not displace the first one. They actually just expand it or prolong it. They are, they are inconsequential as far as in terms of structure. They do not have the structural weight as the initial tonic chord. And we'll come back to that in a moment. Um, This last slide is just one more thing I wanted to mention about the 6-4 chord. This is the ending of Mozart's um, piano concerto in C major. Um, and it's a typical example of how um, the, the six, another example of how the 6 chord is used. 6-4 uh, chord, excuse me. The very first chord right there is a 6-4 chord. At this point, at the very end of the, of the concerto, at this point, the soloist would start his cadenza, which, as we know, is a passage for, just for the soloist in a concerto that's full of uh, scale flourishes and arpeggio flourishes. It's where they get to really show off. And the 6-4 chord is used to trigger that start. <clears throat> in this particular concerto, Mozart did not write out the cadenza. It's improvised. Um, later on, composers more and more started writing their own cadenzas, and I guess in an effort to control their own work. The end of the cadenza, which I think I, maybe I didn't mention that, it is Italian for cadence, is the word cadenza. <clears throat> it is over when, he, when it, the 6-4 chord resolves down to the 5 chord. Within that space is where the cadenza happens. And then everybody comes back in to, to finish out the piece. Here's a second type of 6-4 chord, the passing 6-4 chord. A subordinate harmony placed between an expanded harmony that often changes positions. As a 1 chord, move into a passing 6-4 chord, move into a 1-6-4 chord. That frame is the same harmony, but it has the chord has changed positions, meaning in this case it's gone from root position to first diversion. Two different chords of similar function may also be connected by a passing chord. Um, I have a little footnote here. Uh, the examples from now on are now being illustrated in a single staff guitar notation in an effort to expand their usage beyond strict common practice. So these examples aren't meant to be written in strict common practice, although they could have been. Um, there are doublings, though, that, that you, you will see that do create parallels, parallel octaves and so. Um, you can just discard that. Even if it were written in the common practice era, we would consider those to just help out the sound of the chord. They aren't meant to be um, considered in the part writing do's and don'ts. Now we're coming back to the carcassi. These are those two chords that expanded the initial one chord. Here's the one chord. 
move it to a 6-4 chord. I'll explain that in a moment. Move it to A minor. Now remember, a passing chord can be surrounded or framed by two chords of, the, of similar function, and that's the case here. We have a 1 chord, and we have a 6 chord as our frame. Looking at the analysis of this passing 6-4 chord, all you really need is just 6-4. In, in something that is, is not a structural chord, like the passing 6-4 chord, you don't need to add the Roman numeral analysis. I just did it in parentheses underneath to make sure we recognize what that chord, what, where it was built. The P is often used, like I said earlier, so you will see P6-4 a lot of times. Now, in this particular case, Carcassi wrote a 7 chord. If you were, it would just depend on how much analysis or how detailed you want your analysis to be, whether you want to indicate that that's a 5-4-3 chord or not. It would be enough since it's just a passing chord. You can still just write 6-4, and that would be perfectly fine with a lot of people. Um, so P6-4 or 6-4, or if you were Mr. Detail or Miss Detail, you might want to write 5-4-3 underneath there because this isn't a 6-4 chord. This is all up to the person that is doing the analysis. <clears throat> and like I said, it depends on how detailed you want your analysis to be. But in terms of your analysis, you just need to be remain uh, consistent with, with your notation. Here's another passing 6-4 chord. This one's passing between two chords of the same function. You got a 1-6 six chord, six, a one six chord, move into a passing 6-4, move into a 1 in root position. So you have this, move into this, move into your 1 chord. It's only acting as an expanding harmony. Example 2C, passing 6-4 substitution. Now, I'm mentioning these because these are often, these often replace just the, the strict 6-4 passing chord. Um, still, this chord here is, is framing two chords of similar function, and all, he, all that's happening here is that the chord adds a G, which turns the, the chord into a 7 chord. So we have 1-6, passing chord. Play that one more time. Again, the analysis for the passing chord could still just be 6 4. It could be 5 4 3 in parentheses. That, the parentheses, anytime you use those, it indicates that it's a chord of, of lower structural weight. Here's another 6 4 substitution. We're getting away from the 5 chord altogether and using the 7 6. What happens is the G is still there from the, but, uh, from the example of before, but the A has disappeared. Another example, passing 6-4, expanding predominant. This is actually the same music that we saw that we heard, saw and heard before in example 2B. I just switched the keys to show you that passing 6-4 chords can pass between any function that you want. Um, so we have a 4-6-4 four, four now. That's what the D first inversion has turned into in this key. Moving to um, passing 6-4 and back to 4. The 4 has changed positions. Now because we're we're framing with our subdominant, we could also use the 2 chord in here because the 4 chord and the 2 chord have the same type of function. So here's the 4-6, the four, moving to the passing 6-4, moving to 2 in first inversion. All that's happened is the A from the D chord has moved up to B. Now this one's very simple, but it is interesting. <clears throat> Notice that the passing motion has disappeared in the bass. We now have a, a repeated bass note. Let's start, yeah. Very 
simple idea, but according to our initial definition where we said that um, the, there's passing motion in the base and that the cords have to change positions, um, this has eliminated that from our definition now. It hasn't gotten any weaker. It is still a passing 6-4 uh, event, but we just lost part of our definition just momentarily. Our next type of 6-4 chord is the neighboring 6-4 chord. <clears throat> a subordinate harmony placed between two harmonies that retain the same position. This, that definition uh, hooks into the one that we just played, the passing 6-4 without, without the bass motion moving. This chord is also called the pedal 6-4 because of the repeated or sustained bass. And here it goes. This is a one goes to a neighbor 6-4 back to one. Like the passing 6-4 notation, you can use an N here. N6-4 is great. Um, you see that the third of the first chord moves up to the F in the second chord and then returns. The other neighbor motion is the fifth of the first chord, moves up to the third of the second chord, and back to G. This simple motion can also embellish any chord you want. I'm still in the same key, I just went to the 5 here, and here's the 5, moving to its neighbor, returning to 5, and there's the 1 chord. Very simple. The final category of our 6-4 chord in total music is the arpeggiated 6-4. Um, sometimes referred to the bass arpeggiation. It expands the single harmony by changing its bass note, typical of freer textures with slow harmonic rhythm, where there are several changes of bass note within a single harmony. Unlike the previous three types of 6 4 chords, in that it does not treat the dissonant fourth as some form of non harmonic tone. Here's the arpeggiated 6. Notice that everything above the bass is just repeated. Here's the arpeggiated 6-4 with more melodic characteristics, and this, this is mostly what you're going to see in the literature. example, the arpeggiated 6-4 with melodic notes offset with other chord tones. So not all the chord tones happen at one time. They offset. Well, that's the close of my demonstration, and I just have a few comments at the end. Um, of course, this is not meant to be a complete examination of all of the issues that are found with this chord. There are matters of voice leading in strict common practice, <clears throat> where all, all of the notes, all, where all of the types of the 6-4 chord except the arpeggiated, all voices approach and leave by step or common tone. There is also the issue of voice exchange with the passing 6-4 chord and the strict doubling conventions in common practice and, and, of course, the part writing rules. And, indeed, an examination of the literature of several genres 
To support the examples here is in order, along with a strong listening examination. Nevertheless, with all structures produced by the 6-4, there is one formative issue to emphasize, which is that which this initial lesson is designed around. And that is the 6-4's action as an expanding agent to more structural harmonies that surround it. Thank you for listening, and thank you for inviting me.